Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. I'm going to say something scandalous, Ronnie. Go on. Plants are meat. And not only are they meat, they're delicious, especially if they're from Impossible Foods. They taste like beef. Exactly. Impossible is making meat history this summer. Yeah, they are. Summer of Impossible. I am so excited to be spending time cooking my summer foods, all that good stuff. And guess what? We can use Impossible sausages, Impossible brats. I mean, it's going to be a great summer for Impossible foods. Impossible beef is made from plants and 19 grams of protein per serving. And it's better for the planet. And it's meat. Plant meat. Correct. So if you're looking for something to grab for your grill, grab some Impossible beef. Summer of impossible start making meat history today just head over to the meat aisle at your local grocery store grab some impossible beef or patties and get grilling introducing the new audible original breakthrough the genre redefining audio only series that strips away the superficial to reaffirm what matters most pure talent featuring celebrity judges kelly Rowland, sarah Bareilles, and host david diggs hear every step of the musical journey as five undiscovered musicians battle through a series of high stakes singing and songwriting challenges for one top spot as musically gifted as they are artistically unique each finalist is driven by the same dream to become music's next must listen But to break through, they'll have to dig deep, pushing their vocal, songwriting, and recording chops to their absolute limits while keeping their feet and emotions firmly grounded. So, who will break through? It's time to find out. Join Kelly, Sarah, and David on a musical journey unlike anything you've ever seen. This is Breakthrough. Listen on Audible or wherever you get your podcasts. Go to audible.com slash breakthrough. Follow along using hashtag BreakthroughXAudible. Welcome to Dwell Hello. Today we're going to be doing House Hunters International Season 111, Episode 5, called Castle Hunting in Ireland, which means you're going to get to hear some terrible accents. Very terrible accents. <laughs> my Irish my Irish accents are a little bit, little bit rusty since I haven't been watching my Love Island UK in a few months, oh. so that's where I normally hone my, hone my accents. My but I'll try terrible. my best. Well, everybody, I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Happy Hi. Hi. We're Americans. Huh. We're Americans. We are proud to do terrible Irish accents. You can find us over on the Watch What Crappens podcast, which is about Bravo, yep. sometimes Netflix. You know, just go over there, listen to it, see how you like it. Okay? Yeah, exactly. And on today's episode, um, House Hunters International finally asked the question, what would happen if some people from Connecticut decide to buy a castle in Ireland? And more importantly... What happens to men who never, ever, ever trim their eyebrows? Okay. <laughs> what happens to those guys? Do they still see? Does the hair uh, just start curling? Touch. Does it quaff itself? <laughs> what the hell happens? Now, this episode was um, suggested by one of you guys. So thank you for suggesting episodes. We love it. And we'll do yeah. as many suggested episodes as we can. Normally, we try and cover anything that's on Hulu because we both have Hulu. Um, this one is not available on Hulu. This is 111 episode 5, and you can find it on YouTube TV. That's where we found it. Yeah. And the way, and the and the easiest way, as as someone who recently had to find it on YouTube TV, just enter in "castle hunting in Ireland" in the search bar on YouTube TV, and it will come right up. It'll pop right up. Won't it? It'll pop right up. <laughs> It'll pop right up like a castle in thirteen twenty two. So this is how it opens: a preview of the show. You know, Gordon, who's the main guy, eyebrows. So I like to call it, scary, scary <laughs> eyebrows. Gordon? Gordon opens it. Uh, he's like, a surprise? Oh, cutlery! And it's a sword. And the real estate lady's like, well, you like your weapons, I know. <laughs> oh, tut, 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 tut. You like your weapons, I know that. My name is Helen, and I have the hair of Tabitha Coffee, but a smooth jacket of a Judy Dench. Ha. She does have kind of Judy Dench face. She has some Judy, Judy, Judy Dench qualities. And what's great about Helen 
is that she is so sweet and she's smiling and you know she hates these people. You know that she goes to the pub and she gets drunk and she says, well, let me tell you about this couple from Connecticut that came looking for a castle. A castle, I say. They're ridiculous peoples. Yeah. Um, Yeah, she obviously hates them. Don't blame her. She's also (laughs) extremely hot. Like, this girl has it together. Way, way too much sex appeal for this show. Also... I think that she stays so smiley because she's not even a real estate person. She works for the auction people. So yeah. she's just leading them to, like, she got some some client who died or something. So she's just trying to auction this shit off to whoever will take it. But, of course, yeah. the Americans are like, we want some place with no air conditioning or floors. <laughs> she's smiling because for the first time in 10 years someone's been able to show off the stupid castle that has no roof they're like let's let's show it to the americans they're gonna think it's something special (laughs) sure enough well before they start leading a regal life they'll need to see if they have enough money for a palace or a pile of rocks no judgment just saying (laughs) so uh we now go to southbury connecticut which is pretty close to where i grew up and uh, we see this guy, Gordon, and he's just like singing Irish music. I don't know what he's singing, but it's a lot of like, and the fisherman to the mountain, and the bob and the goat, and the goat went to the bob, and the bob went to the goat, and the goat went to climbing, and they found a little wagon. Why are like folk singers never good singers? You know, like when people, like there's never a family that sits around singing together that sounds great. And this never. isn't any country you go to, okay? Even if they're Irish style. He's like, yeah. up with her, but up a sword, up we go with the Lord. Fiak Maku has given the follow up to my collar. And the family's like, raw, raw, raw. It's like, you all suck, okay? You're all off the show. Get out. I know. I would love to see some sort of American Idol or voice type show that features families singing Irish pub music or Irish folk songs. <laughs> just like, it would just be a series of famous people like staring at the audience because they'll never swivel their chairs. It's like, and the hat and the hurry and the head and the flow getting the man behind the highlands and the hood and the leprechaun and the head and the clover and the greens and the potato and the man and the man and the goat and the women. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Uh, j- or just family singing, you know, just a competition of like the Von Trapps, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Von Trapp. The Von Trapp. I feel like there was a Von Trapp competition. Who could be the best, best Von Trapps? Um, so anyway, so Gordon's like, um, I'm of Irish extraction of both sides of my family. And, uh, there's just something about Irish music that stirs me inside. Oh, sorry. That was some Enya. (laughs) (laughs) Sail away, sail away, sail away. (laughs) So Liz, his wife is like, history, you like history too, don't you? He's like, oh yeah, I love history. Yeah, he loves history. Gordon loves history. He's like, yeah, history. Okay, now the Gimson or something, because he's dressing his son in, it looks like it's made out of football gear, like the the cloth and the the foam insides, but it's supposed to be, I guess, some Irish battle thing. Now, listen, I watch every show, uh, I watch... um, I'm trying to think of the name of it with Utrid. Utrid. Oh, I watch yeah. like every show on Netflix. It's like about castles and fighting and stuff like that. I'm telling you right now, Gordon would not last two fucking seconds. Okay. He's like the <laughs> preacher or the monk that gets his throat slit within like five yes. minutes of the show. Yeah. Gordon is the guy who like faithfully executes commands for the bad person. <laughs> and then like is shocked when he gets betrayed. It's like, thank you for doing that. Now you die. But I did my shot. And it's like. <laughs> um, so Liz is like, well, so we were talking with this guy and he was talking about his this medieval reenactment group. And it was pretty cool. And so we started going out and having events in castles, you know. Well, we were in Connecticut. So it was more like we went to Barnes and Noble and had events. But we said it was a castle. A castle of books. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we went to the Society for Creative Anachronism. Okay, and that's a world our kids have been brought up in. There's something so fishy about Liz, okay? (laughs) This is how she phrases this. She's like, well, right after we got married, we started talking to this guy. 
<laughs> and he was into this reenactment crew, so we'd go out and we'd do these events and castles. I'm like, what the hell? Is this lady swinging? Like, what's the subtext? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, know. Uh, I also like the idea of uh, basically, the kids were basically r- raised as LARPers. That's what she's saying. We've been ra- they were raised them as LARPers, which is funny because I think that like most kids are sort of born as LARPers, right? I think it's, by the time you're like... The the first ten years of your life, you're pretty much larping everything you do, right? Yeah, it's just I called mean, being a kid. <laughs> it's being a kid. <laughs> you don't need a you don't need an actual name for that until you're like fifty. Yeah. So then, um, so they're like, well, we went on a trip to Ireland with some friends, and uh, I, you know, I just started thinking about castles in Ireland. It was the strangest thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then we just see the slow mo of her daughter just like raising a bow, like we will move to Ireland. We will have a castle with no roof, and we will shoot an arrow at every sheep that comes nearby. Yeah, frankly, we just we just want to go somewhere where it's legal to use a bow and arrow. I mean, for the amount of times our poor kids have been taken in for neighborhood cats gone missing. <laughs> and then, and then the son in slow motion throws an axe, and then the whole family lifts up their bows and arrows. <laughs> Uh, you know, the family no him. one wants to live with, you know, or next to, you know how on the show we're always laughing because the husband always wants privacy. This is a husband who needs privacy. Yeah. This is the kind of husband you don't want any neighbors nearby because they will be dead. Okay. There's deadly weapons. This family is, if they're not singing their terrible folk music, they're like, <laughs> you know, having yeah. target practice right next to your bedroom window. Now, listen, I totally support LARPing. I have actually several friends who are very involved in LARPing, and some actually design LARPs, and I think that's awesome. I just think it's kind of crazy to then invest, like, a million dollars into to live in your LARP. <laughs> that's, no. that's all. But listen, I support it, okay? Live so, action um, role-playing. Oh, yeah. For people who don't know what that is, live action role-playing. So Gordon's like, yeah, you know, spending money right now has caveats. To have an outlay of an appreciable side would require funding. He's one of those people who talks as crazily as, <laughs> as, crazy as possible to sound smart. Yeah. To how, have an outlay of any appreciable size would require funding. Okay, you just you need a big fucking place for your swinger crew. Okay, Gordon, just yeah. say it in English. I know, I like that. Like spending a lot of money has ca- has caveats. It's like yeah, because you're spending a lot of money. <laughs> this is not a revolutionary concept. It's like if you're going to spend nine hundred thousand dollars, there will be some caveats. As in, don't put it towards something that will um, sink you financially and ruin your life. That is a good caveat. Yes. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome, family. Welcome to Ireland, all right? Kill any cat you want. Auctioneer (laughs) Helen Cassidy will take her clients all over Ireland to find their perfect place. Well, if you're thinking about buying a castle in Ireland, they can be very reasonable, especially if you're an idiot. Castle dreams can come true on every budget, and you're purchasing a piece of history. A piece of history that has no roof. Because that roof has been lost to history. That's that's why one would say it's, a, it's sometimes it's a slower market. Because, you know, some of these castles have no roofs. So it's a little bit of a slower market. And Liz is like, well, we need to live somewhere. I mean, obviously, we need two bedrooms, a ba- two bathrooms, a kitchen, something we could have events in, a big bowl for key- people to put their keys in, um, and a place we could do <laughs> medieval reenactments would be good. Oh, that sounds very exciting. I'm like, oh, yeah. Helen. <laughs> Helen is cracking up. Like, her vein is popping out of her forehead this whole time. Like, she's trying not to die laughing. She's just nodding and smiling and just giving these little pleasantries. She's like, that sounds very exciting. And Gordon's like, castles really should have all the bits and pieces of, you know, medieval stuff. Oh, yes, we're going to have some fun. Particularly afterwards, when I go back and have a pint with my friend at the pub, I said, stupid Americans actually were interested in that castle with no roof. That castle with no roof that's been part of folk tales for the centuries and centuries about, oh, the castle with no roof. No one would buy the castle with no roof. Who would buy the castle with no roof? They bought the castle with no roof. Ha! Huh. And I want fireplaces. Shut up, Liz. Just be quiet, Liz. Okay? So, and Gordon's and then, like, yeah, and also we need cur- castle curb appeal. Something that really gives you the impression you're entering the medieval era. Also with a microwave. I'm going to need that. Uh, you know what's going to give your castle medieval cur- uh, curb appeal? The fact that it's a castle. Yeah. Don't <laughs> park your fucking it. minivan out front, Gordon. Okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> and then Liz is like, I also want a vault. I need a vault. And so Helen goes, For what, all oh. the vow packs you've been saving up? Get out of here with your vault. She goes, oh, you have a good long checklist, which was her way of saying, oh, you're being mighty unreasonable for a bunch of people from Connecticut who are trying to buy a castle for less than a million dollars. It's a castle and you want to spend less than a million dollars. Yeah. Well, Liz said that they're willing to go up to like a million and a half if it's like super dupes ready, but uh, because they're going to rent it out and stuff. But now she's saying she doesn't want to spend more than 900 And she's like, and that's only if we can rent it out. And Helen's like, well, I have plans to show everything to a pile of a palace and rocks to a palace of palace. What? Let's face it, they're idiots. All right, anything yeah. these cheapos will pay me for. Five dollars. All right, there it is. You know what? I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna bring them to a split level house and just tell them it's a castle and see what they do. <laughs> tell them like, a, a well of the turret. This this castle right here is way ahead of its time. Yes, it looks like a modern condo, but it was actually built in 1213. So the first one is Sigginstown Castle, and it's a ruinous medieval dwelling. <laughs> don't want that in my Zillow listing. Yeah, ruinous. Ruinous, ruinous medieval dwelling. I don't want ruinous in my Zillow, ever. Most popular keyword search in Zillow, ruinous. <laughs> and they walk up it says but it's very attractive in terms of medieval artifacts so then Liz looks at it and goes well this is definitely a fixer upper but I like it I'm like fixer upper it has no roof it looks like it's been bombed out that's not a fixer upper <laughs> okay it's the shell of a castle right it has no roof no floors no windows and no doors <laughs> it's literally it's literally it's a, a big rock fence that you're gonna get crushed in the second you like sing terribly off key okay yeah yeah, it's not a fixer upper. It's like a, it's like a a, a make it a make it upper. Like fixer upper implies there's anything to like improve upon. <laughs> it's yeah. just piles of stones. Yeah, a maker upper is castle. something that you just have to come up with an entire lie for Airbnb <laughs> because this shit ain't gonna fly. So he's like, Helen, now what can you tell me about this castle? And better question, what can I tell you about it? All right. Aww. So it's two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Liz loves that it comes on a nice big parcel of land, so they can do outdoor events and camping events and everything. And they uh, they love that it's cheap. And Helen's <laughs> Helen's like, well, I don't know how many bathrooms and bedrooms are in it because that's for the future. Because there are no bathrooms and bedrooms. It's literally old grass and stones. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't know how much of a fixer up where I want. This needs a lot of work. And Liz goes, oh, this is the doorway, I guess. Yes, Liz. <laughs> the fucking, By the way. The fucking it's... only hole that leads into the place from the ground. <laughs> you never really want uh, a piece of real estate where you have to say, this is the door, I guess. <laughs> like... Or how about when they're talking about the potential for bedrooms, Liz goes, well, it's hard to say with a ruin. It's like, you're buying a ruin. You're buying a ruin. Just just remember, like, hmm, I don't know. Does this come with a kitchen? It's hard to say with a ruin. <laughs> oh, and Helen's like, well, I think you're, you'd be excited about this building. He's like, it's a project. And Helen's <laughs> like, well, I can't wait to show you the older part. Follow me. And Gordon what? has to, like, scrunch down to get through this tiny little door. <laughs> Poor guy. And so he has to, like, bend his knees, which is apparently a big thing. And his wife is like, you can do it, Gordon. Great job. Gordon, you're doing it. Great job, Gordon. Go, Gordon. You poor Gordon. I also like that before they went up into the tower, Gordon's like, well, this has a lot of possibilities. I mean, it's a wide open space. I'm like, that's because there are no walls and no build. There's no building. Of course it's a wide open space. There's always There's always possibilities when there's no structure. Now listen here, listen here, Liz. Let me tell you what it's got. It's got core bells, all right, and uh, all these arches. Those are great. The extants, those are great, great. You know what yeah. those are? I'm just giving you a little lesson, all right? <laughs> yeah, he goes. You know, and then they go up to another room. And he's like, you know, uh, I have to say, I didn't see any murder holes coming through the entrance here. <laughs> It's like, I didn't know murder holes were on the list. You know what else you didn't see? Bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchen, dining room, living room, uh, door, windows, foundation. You need a place to poop before you can worry about murder holes. Yeah. Okay? Like, prioritize. So then I'll be at, the they can be the, the same screen, thing. On the bottom of the screen, it says, murder holes, a hole through which harmful substances or objects can be thrown by attackers. 
<laughs> well, you know, there's always the, op- the option of an oubliette, you know, which is, you know, a secret dungeon with a trap door and ceiling was also up there. That's so exactly wants- what your family needs when they start singing and your guests can just like <laughs> press a lever and you guys just like drop down into the dungeon. Does someone have the uh, crank for this oubliette door? Anyone? <laughs> They're singing again. And Liz is like, listen, I know this to you, this is daunting, Gordon. All right, I saw you try and get through that doorway. But to me, it's exciting. So many new possibilities. It's like, Helen, <laughs> I mean, Liz, there's no roof, Liz. You know what's crazy, though? The sad part is I sort of agreed with her. I was sort of like, you know, this would be really cool to just, like, build an awesome structure in here that has, like, elements of castle. I, I, I kind of was like, this could be amazing. Well, but then I as actually, I watched the rest of the episode, I was like, oh, but what they want out of this structure is not... No. Yeah, I actually watched a show on, I think it's Hulu, because Hulu, you can watch such random shows. You know, you watch one home design show, and they're like, look, Crazy Homes. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to watch Crazy Homes. And uh, it was these just insane projects. And some old rock star bought a place in Ireland, a castle in Ireland that he wanted to fix up, and he's... He's like, I'll do it myself, you know? So he just keeps hiring crews. And you can't just build something inside a castle, people. <laughs> They're like, yeah. well, we need to what, knock down this wall. You can't knock down the wall, people. Yeah. Well, and so it becomes too. this huge disaster that never finishes, you know? Homeaglow is a marketplace that connects homeowners and renters with house cleaners. You can get your home clean for $19, okay? Highly discounted initial cleaning. They really want to prove themselves to you, and they did for me. Uh, There's discounted recurring cleanings with Forever Clean membership. Yeah, just save time by hiring a professional to clean. Don't do it yourself. Okay, you get high-quality cleaning professionals. This is wonderful. We've used them. Our houses came out sparkling clean. It was wonderful. Visit www.homeaglow.com slash podcast to book your first cleaning for only $19. That's H-O-M-E-A-G-L-O-W dot com slash podcast. New beginnings are in season on the Max Original Series and Just Like That. From executive producer Michael Patrick King, alongside stars and executive producers Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, and Kristen Davis, the exciting next chapter of Sex and the City follows Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte as they navigate the complicated reality of life, love, and friendship in their 50s. Alongside Naya, Che, Seema, and LTW, this vibrant group of friends experiences the ups and downs of life, knowing they can always count on each other. Watch the brand new 11-episode season of And Just Like That, streaming only on Max. And listen to the official podcast hosted by executive producer, writer, and director Michael Patrick King after every episode. Find And Just Like That, The Writer's Room, wherever you get your podcasts. You know what I love about saving money is that when I save money, I can then spend that money on things I really want to spend money on, like nice food or board games. Rakuten helps us to be a smarter shopper and save money on just about everything. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. We have things we need to buy, whether it's home essentials or a self-care treat just for you. Yeah, with Rakuten, we can get cash back on clothes, groceries, travel, and much much more. In fact, there are over 4,200 stores across every single category on Rakuten. Even better, you can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points. In case you're wondering, the stores in Rakuten are ones that you know and love, and lots of cool ones waiting to be discovered. I mean, some of my personal favorites are Expedia, CVS.com, JCPenney, Instacart. I mean, it just goes on and on. Join the 17 million members who are already saving. It's free and easy to join Rakuten and start getting cash back. Start shopping at Rakuten.com now, or download the Rakuten app to start saving today. You're your cash back really adds up. That's R A K U T E N dot com. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's, I, I, in my mind, I was just thinking theoretically because it's like, I don't, it's not my money. And it's like, it would be cool to see that turn into something awesome. But realistically, it's like, just like you said, you can't just like knock down walls. And I mean, we, Hillary has a hard enough time you know, renovating, you know, a house from 1994 on Love It or List It. I can't imagine anyone taking on a castle from many centuries ago. Oh, my gosh. So house number two. Helen's like, I want this castle to be an inspiration to you so you can see what a finished historic Irish castle can look like. 
<laughs> yeah, Gordon's like, standing in the shadow of these buildings that have been there for centuries, it's like I'm part of the whole flow of history, and to be involved with something like that is something to be sought. I'm like, well, how do you think the castle feels? The castle's like, I'm a castle. Oh, no, get this guy out of me. I'm a historical <laughs> structure. Get him out of me. Remove the Gordon. Remove the Gordon. <laughs> it's Turin Castle. And Liz is like, oh, you know what I wonder? I wonder what the acoustics are like. Hit it, Gordy. <laughs> and he's like, hi, in the river. The river flows among the grasses. He's like, oh, God, I love him. Open the doors, <laughs> lovely. I have something to tell you, dear. And Helen is just like, she's clapping along, but like looking like, uh, so how long do I have to film with these people? <laughs> She's like, well, here, you just have to put in the groundwork. And by groundwork, I mean vocal lessons, Gordon. <laughs> vocal. <laughs> Acoustics can only take you so far, okay? <laughs> number one was definitely cheap, but it would take money to build their dreams. What are they going to think of number two? So they, they drive to Galway, County Galway, and Helen... She brings him to this castle, and I could not for the life of me understand what she was saying. So the best I could get was, she goes, may I present you to Carol Kane on Wee Castle. <laughs> Carol Kane. <laughs> Carol Kane on Wee Castle. <laughs> Carol Kane, Isn't like, welcome to the castle. <laughs> welcome to the castle. Judd Hirsch will be here at any moment. <laughs> Um, so Liz is like, well, it's big. It's got some stone in it. And Gordon goes, I'm seeing matriculations and in several instances of lookouts in a permanent position. So that's good. Okay, Gordon. Yeah, I think you should focus more on the fact that there's a running toilet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this place that? is way more modern. It's like finished. It has floors on the inside. It has like a little kitchen. It just looks like a little house on the inside. Yeah, it's like quote-unquote more modern and by modern meaning that like it was brought to like 1987 or something <laughs> like modern yeah. compared to the middle ages when it was built yeah it has a roof so it's like yeah. super modern <laughs> it has, it has, yeah. and yeah. this one's 750 all in and liz is like cool now liz just says cool all the time for the rest of the episode yeah. she just goes cool and helen's like when there's three acres with plenty of outhouses and a little <laughs> river for you listen another keyword i don't ever want my solo search <laughs> outhouses uh, or plenty of outhouses not a phrase i want plenty We've of got outhouses. shit holes all over this property for you girl <laughs> So, so they walk in and like immediately Gordon hits his head and he's like, oh, short door. But they don't even pay attention because Helen's in the middle saying, and here you can roast your boar. <laughs> Stupid American. You probably think that's what you do. Then Liz goes, oh, my God, there's a stove. You know, stoves keep things warm. <laughs> and Gordon's like, you know, the, mid the medieval factor isn't what I'd hope for here. This is not much of a medieval factor. But it's comfortable. Well, the kitchen's on this level, but I don't see appliances. Well, what do you want, Gordon? Okay, they didn't have dishwashers in Henry VIII's time. Make up your fucking mind. You know why it's not as medieval as you'd like? Because it's the 2000s. Yeah. I love him complaining about medieval shit, and then he's mad about appliances. Hilarious. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, and speaking of the appliances, uh, most of them are hidden behind the, these giant doors. It looks like almost like a wardrobe, and it opens up, and there's like a sink and everything hidden behind, behind there. And he's like, he's like, oh, man. He's like, it looks so medieval on the outside. I kind of wish the inside matched the outside. And then they put up on screen, they say... Medieval kitchens did not have microwaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he goes, it needs a kick in the medieval. I want a medieval microwave. It's ridiculous. I would be more concerned with the fact that the thing looks like a giant structure on the outside. Like it's an enormous castle, and then on the inside it's like one room. I'm like, where, where's the rest of this castle? Yeah, that's true. I think that's what happens when you build a house inside a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just... Like, if, if anything is haunted, it's that castle. It's the Carol... I mean, Carol Kane literally played a ghost in Scrooged. Yeah, so, in like, this castle. Clear, in this castle. <laughs> she is now, like... She has, like, resumed the role in the castle. So they go to look, check out the bedroom, and Liz... Cool, cool, cool. I like that light. It's like a tree. It's like, it is a tree, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> and the beams are really nice. And there's like a face painted on a window. It's like, look at that, a face in the window laughing at me. 
<laughs> that okay. won't terrorize me at all. <laughs> yeah, another thing I don't want in my Zillow listing. Face in the window laughing at me. Yeah, and then Helen, uh, Helen's like, okay, now Gordon, what do you think of this? I'm going to bring something over to you. Please stop singing. It's not a microphone. It's a sword. <laughs> And what does he say? He's like, yeah, some cutlery. Yeah, I love cutlery. Yeah. He goes, if the sword comes with the castle, I'm in. And he goes, hold on. Let me see if it balances here on the middle of my... That's how you tell a good sword. You want me to show you how to look at a good sword, huh, Helen? <laughs> Come on, Helen. I'd rather not. Thank you. <laughs> so they go outside, and she's like, so what did you think of the famous Carol Kane Ennui Castle? <laughs> And well, it's cool. I like it. I mean, it's three and a half acres, shit houses everywhere. It's nice, like a little castle efficiency. <laughs> Which it's not. I don't. Again, I don't think I want those concepts paired. And so Gordon goes, "Well, it's sadly lacking in murmur holes and obliettes, and it's not as medieval as <laughs> hoping it to be." So Gordon sorry, needs Gordon's. more murder holes. <laughs> he must have murder holes. But Helen saves the la- the best for last. But the price is going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. And their little out outdoor activity today is falconry. Yeah, uh, my family's been cursed with a passion for history for as long as I can remember. When I was a child, I loved cathedrals. So that's basically what dictated my life. I love cathedrals. <laughs> yeah, and eyebrows. Your your family has also been cursed with crazy eyebrows that will never fucking stop. And yeah. Liz is like, okay, you know what that falcon wants? A treat. Just give him his treat. Well, here's what I tell him. You find me a fucking murder hole, falcon. <laughs> All right? You'll be fed when my hole is murdered. Now figure it out. So then we get like a little uh, review of what we've seen so far. So we, house number one. And you see Helen's like, well, we're in the younger part of the castle. He's like, oh, younger is relatively speaking. And then uh, and also, like, you're the one who wants a medieval, sir. Yeah, and also uh, Liz goes, "Oh, and the fireplace is fabulous for medieval cooking. You don't cook <laughs> in a fireplace, Liz. Okay." Yeah, and then the narrator says, "To find a move-in ready castle that fits their budget, Helen brings them literally across the country. I mean, can we give this woman a raise for crying out loud?" <laughs> She delivers a palace, but it comes at a king's ransom, which could set these idiots back. So here we are at Ballyhannon, Ballyshannon, Shannonhannon. Ballyhannon, Ballyhannon, our castle. <laughs> well, this now, is a remarkable renovation. Yeah. It's four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. So many features you'll both be happy with today. Not one flushable toilet in the bunch. All right, <laughs> poor price is 1.3 million. And Liz is like, oh, that is way more than we can afford, Helen. You are buying a castle. How much money were you expecting to pay? It's a castle. If you're not planning to spend at least a million dollars on a proper castle, then you should get out of the castle yeah, market. Yeah, get out I'm of sorry. the castle game, Liz. <laughs> and uh, she's like, but it's a fantastic rental property. You could get $1,000 a night or more. How many thousands does it take to make a million point three? <laughs> That's a, a lot, lot of visitors. It's a lot of nights. A lot okay? of visitors. It's a lot of swinger parties. Okay, This guy well, can maybe- barely crouch through a doorway. Well, let's see. Their budget was nine hundred thousand, and one point three—that's four hundred thousand dollars more. So, really, they have to just have four hundred pe- four hundred people come visit at thousand. That's not as crazy if you think about it that way. You can get four hundred people. You can have a little fair, thousand oh, dollars. Maybe not. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. So, Liz is like, oh, you know, I mean, being able to rent it—that's not enough of an insurance policy. And Helen goes, "But look, there's a nice murder hole." <laughs> You know what's nice about this property? You don't have outhouses. You have what we call in-houses, which is basically an outhouse that's inside. It doesn't have any plumbing, but you can still get that feeling of shitting in a hole. (laughs) And then murdering it. (laughs) And then murdering it. Shit in the hole, murder the shit. You've got yourself a murder hole. 1.3 mil, please. And you just drop that shit right into the oubliette. (laughs) Trap door under the the loo. (laughs) That stupid Gordon's like... Look, it's a suit of armor. Will this armor fit me? No, Gordon. Okay, the door doesn't even fit you, Gordon. Gordon, you're going to get a roof on that castle before you get into that suit of armor. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh they're walking around this castle. And th- now this is the ca- this is to me the, what the, this is like the castle. Like this is like 
here we are. Like if I'm in the if I'm in the market to have a castle, this is what I want my castle to look like. Assuming, by the way, asterisk, assuming you're not doing something cool like an ultra modern house with like castle trappings, right? Which is what my vision was for house number one. But if you're at this point in the show, we realize they're not looking for that experience. They actually want like a true castle castle thing. So I'm like, here it is. This is perfect. It looks great. Yeah. And um, she, they go look at the bedrooms, and there's a four-poster bed. And Liz is like, oh, my God, I love this bed. It's just not huge. It's so period. It's like, a, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a full-size bed. I'm like, you're the first person in the history of House Hunters that actually <laughs> likes the smaller bed. Yeah. And Gordon gets a pretty big medieval feeling in this place. And <laughs> Helen's like, be careful of the stairs. They're different heights and widths. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I I love uh, that every day <laughs> going up and down the staircase is going to be a hazard to your health because you can trip at any moment. It cracks so me medieval. up that they keep going, God, this is so medieval. And then they do a close up and it's of an air conditioner. I know. I love that. She goes, she goes, okay, everyone look up and you just see an air conditioning. It's like, oh, awesome. It's a murder hole. <laughs> yeah. And Helen goes, let's hope I can get a check before he does something stupid and falls down those stairs. <laughs> I, uh, I love so, Helen. Uh, yeah, I know. She's <laughs> she's like, these people are ridiculous. <laughs> that air conditioner cracked me up. It was like the fact that they were going on and on about how medieval everything is in that big ass air conditioner right there in the hallway. In the yeah, in every room. It's so funny. And he's like, God, this is a wonderful space. I feel like I'm back in the day in Ireland. It's better than great. It's magnificent. Well, I'm glad you're impressed with the great old stupid, but there's a surprise downstairs. The dungeon. We're unwelcome guests. We're stored along with the Wi-Fi box. Let's go there. I was about to say, there's all these cables. It's like the least medieval room in the entire place. It's, like, it's well, the hub for all your internet communication. Yeah, so we medieval. got a prisoner, but unfortunately, they keep messing with the Wi-Fi, so we had to let him go. <laughs> and Gordon's excited. He's like, I was only asking for one murder hole, but I get two murder holes, a dungeon, and it's perfectly placed, a perfect dungeon with earthling capacity. Yeah. And Liz is like, come on, the challenge is we need more entertaining space if this is going to be $1.3 million. I, I'm not ready to say yes to this dress, Missy. And Helen Liz, just squints at her like, die. <laughs> How much more entertaining space? There was like a, a, a magnificent living room. There's this big dining room. It's a castle. How much more entertaining space? I mean, I think that she wants to like host the giant LARPs at this castle or something like that. Yeah. That must be. And you also, when, you're only, when your point of reference is like, a place with no roof or walls, you're basically outside. So, of course, everything looks small. It's like, yeah. wow. House one, which is five acres of outside, Liz. <laughs> or house number two, which is a thousand square feet or whatever. So now they have to deliberate. And Gordon's like, well, I really think that we should go for the fancy one because even though it was the most expensive and it does include the M word, which we all know stands for... Mm, why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, that's the best bet, you know? And she's like, but we're going to put ourselves financially at risk. Yeah. Right? Um, she wants a one with, that doesn't cost anything with no walls, or no roof or whatever. And right. um, he wants the most expensive one, but they agree that, you know, duh, they can't afford that. So he's like, put the heat, the murder holes, come on. And yeah. um, so she's like, I'm yeah, sorry, I got, like, uh, no, I got lost. I got lost. I was no, just fine. looking for murder holes, and I yeah. found it. So Gordon's like, well, Helen certainly took us on a road trip, didn't she? Oh, wow, we crisscrossed all over Ireland. And Helen's like, goddamn house hunters not, re- not, not reimbursing me for my gas money. Goddamn stupid Americans with a stupid, stupid castle wants. Yeah, and Liz is like, financially, we'd be at risk. But guess what? Number one, that'll be a journey. He's like, a money pit? I mean, are we going to be able to handle that from Connecticut? Now, this is the part I really want to see. These two on the phone with contractors in Ireland. Exactly. Who are That's- working on their castle. That's what I. That's what I was thinking too. Like, how's that going to work out? So then, and Gordon, this is the part of the show where Gordon starts to talk about the willies a lot. He's like, "Wow, I mean, having to go from nothing to to livable. That's giving me the willies, and that's a that's an authentic medieval expression. The willies. Yeah, 
Um, and he says aura a lot too. He's like, you know what I really like? The aura of the murder hole. I love the murder <laughs> yeah. hole auras. And you know what else? I like the aura of Sickens Town too. You did you like Sickens Town? That's a good aura that building had. Yeah. He's like, you know, house number three. I really like that. There's no open-ended cost. It's ready to move in. It gives me a medieval feel. It's got heat, murder holes, dungeons, anything any reasonable person would require, you know? So let's move to the place with no ha- no no walls and no roof. <laughs> and that is yeah. the first one. They pick house number one. Yeah, because he says, because when she's really pushing for it, he goes, <laughs> he goes, wow. You're really becoming a dreamer. I like that. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. He's like, look at you, a dreamer all of a sudden. Jeez. All of a sudden, dreamer. That's all I want is my wife to finally be a dreamer. <laughs> I dream of my husband finally being able to walk through a goddamn doorway. That's what I dream of. <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> I really want, you know, we decided ultimately to go for house number one because we realized the sky has no limit. There literally is no limit. There's no roof. <laughs> so that we see them getting comfortable in their new outside which means setting up a tent because they can't like live in the house so they're setting up a tent with the family and their daughter's like wow (laughs) this is so much fun (laughs) there's a bug in here and liz is like yeah sure we could have a nice easy time in retirement but we chose to have an adventure and then it pulls back on them as they're making the tent and the kid just goes oh there's a bug in here (laughs) I know. They do something cool, which is that they have a contest where they invite kids from like a university to submit ideas for how to redo the castle, which I think is really cool. And so I was really curious. This episode was shot in 2015. It's been five years. I want to see where where it's at. So I did a search and I found their website and um, the website was current in that they had an update from August of like, hey, we're going to be like disinfecting the walls. But as far as I can tell, they're the the castle is still the castle. And I think that if I remember correctly from the website, there was a blurb that was kind of like, well, you know, some castles are really meant really for defense. And you don't really live in the castle. You live in the house beside the castle. And then when people come to attack, you go into the castle. So I kind of feel like they're maybe rebranding their intentions to like, they're not going to live in the castle. They're just going to live by the castle and then play around in the castle. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm looking at it too. And the... um They've got horses now, so that's that's mm-hmm. something. Uh, I'm trying to close get close in, but it keeps changing the page. Do not. I think for LARPing, page. it's I don't a great, see any windows still. The design looks pretty cool. Um, oh, I don't think I saw the design. I don't think I saw the final. Yeah, design. the main picture there has little arrows, so you can look at the different pictures. And so they show the drawing that won, I guess, and it has a bunch of new modern windows in there. And it has some solar panels on top, and then it has a picture of some guys with a cement truck. <laughs> And, Are you uh, on the SigginstownCastle.com? Uh-huh. Yeah, the oh, front banner what, picture has little arrows on the side. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that the uh, the website <laughs> is also rather medieval. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. So I, oh, they've got a strange um, window feature. It's like a window in the shape of a candy cane. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's I mean, this would definitely be really cool once they get it. Up and up and running, but yeah. Um, hey, you know what? You got a dream. Go get you a castle. You know, we yeah. Make fun I mean, of it I, for fun, but go get you a castle. I no, would love I actually to go thought it was kind of castle. cool. I was kind of thinking, wow, like that's it is kind of cool. I just, I think again, my vision for building with a castle would be to put something more. Um, I would want like castle foundation with like cool modern like modern glassy wood or whatever thing around it, but that's not what they're looking for. Yeah, and they did make this a community thing because they said, we don't want just a, a home. We want it to be a community thing. And, you know, I mean, on one on the cynical side is, of course, you get free designs and stuff like that <laughs> from having contests. But, you know, they also get a lot of people teaching classes there. They yeah. have traditional skills, living history, our flag project. Filming a TV episode about this music se- yeah. music session sections you see, Heritage Week Heritage Week so it looks like they're yeah, living it cool. up over there. I mean, uh, but that being said, we are five years into this project, so uh, it's I mean, this is definitely a journey. Yeah, uh, and I actually I I actually feel bad because you know that they got really screwed by this pandemic and getting their ca- I mean. Uh, I know there are people who are in a lot worse shape from the pandemic than the people who decided to buy a castle. You're like, those poor people. Those poor people bought a castle. (laughs) I'm invested in their journey now, damn it. 
I don't know, um, but this is pretty cool. So that's the end of this dwell. Hello, everybody. We will yeah, be back so uh, next week. Yeah, we'll be back next week. Who knows what we'll be rec- what, what we'll be covering? But it should be exciting. This was our second castle themed episode. I can't believe we've had already two in this yeah. series. Uh, it's always an adventure seeing what HGTV has for us. So thank you all for listening to this show on Citra Premium. We really appreciate it. Um, check us out on Watch for Crappins for other snarky recaps. Um, and uh, be safe and sound. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Prime members. You can listen to Watch for Crappins ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or... You can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery.